Hi, welcome to this video series on SMT solvers. Today I'm going to talk about a problem related to program analysis. Um, I, will, I will show you how to use SMT solvers for approving correctness of certain classes of programs. Um, today I'm taking an example, a C program, uh, and I will transform this into an SMT model, and I will show you how to compare two, uh, two things. One is a specification, another is an implementation, to show that they are equal to each other, for example. Okay? And um, uh, along, that, along those lines, I will show you some examples. So this particular example that you are seeing currently is, is from a textbook um, for, uh, written by uh, authors from Carnegie Mellon. Um, they, that, that, that book has uh, nothing to do with the SMT solving in, in general. Um, I am actually using an example uh, uh, to solve this problem uh, using SMT solver. So let's get into the problem, okay? The problem is this, um, they say, in the following code, we have omitted the definitions of constants M and N. Uh, so we don't know really what the values of M and N are. So they, they call it mystery, right? Okay. And there's a function called earth function, which takes two arguments, X and Y. And um, the result is computed by just taking X times M plus Y times N. Okay, that's all. Um, and the result is returned to the caller. So they compile this code uh, for particular values of M and N, they, they don't tell us exactly what the values of M and N are, okay? However, they, they uh, compiled it and then they translated the assembly code back to another C code, which they call it here, um, which is much more complex than the, the original code they wrote, right? The original code is X times M plus Y times N. But, then, but, but uh, when you compile this and uh, reverse engineer it, you may get another code. So for example, the division here disappeared uh, multiplication is also disappearing here, right? It is uh, replaced by uh, left shift operators and uh, right shift operators, okay? So the question now is, can we find out the values of M and N? Um, so how do we find that? Uh, M and N naturally disappears here because uh, the M and N are originally macros, so we don't see them in the assembly code. How do we find the values of M and N? Uh, one trick we can do is, uh, we can just start uh, understanding uh, what is going on here uh, in the optimized arithmetic function and somehow make a guess what are the possible values of M and N are. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let a computer solve this problem for us. So I will use the SMT solver to find the values of M and N uh, in such a way that opt earth function uh, behaves exactly the same as the uh, earth function. What I mean by behaving same is that and there are no there are no differences in terms of the functional behavior. When you send x and y to earth function, the result is same as the uh, calling the opt optimized earth function. Okay, for a given x and y, same x and y, of course. Okay, so uh, how do we uh, find out the values of m and n such that these two things are equal? Uh, all right, so we can try model this problem in uh, SMT solver. Uh, by the way, you notice that there's an if statement. That's something new. It's not a straight line code. Okay, so I'm going to show you how uh, we can directly translate this into SMT model and then find the values of M and N. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that there's some tools like CLI can do that, but I'm going to directly model it in, in SMT. Um, all right, so let's get straight into the problem now. Problem number uh, 243, I call it uh, to match the, the, the practice problem number. So here is the goal, right? The goal is to find the M and N so that uh, our arithmetic version is same as the optimized arithmetic version. Okay, so basically I have one algorithm here and then I have another algorithm here. What I'm going to ask uh, the theorem prover in this case is SMT solver is to find the values M and N, right? Such that um, arithmetic of uh, X, Y, M, N is same as optimized arithmetic of X and Y. Uh, for all possible values of X and Y, it should not be just for one X and Y, uh, they are equal, but for all possible values of X and Y, these two programs must behave the same. So let it find the M and N for us, okay? So uh, that's basically it. I created uh, four symbolic variables, X, Y, M and N. Um, I have just chosen bit vectors to be 16. You could have chosen 32, uh, but that bit vector should not, any, uh, should not be any problem whatsoever in this case. Uh, okay, a bit vector is basically modular arithmetic, right? You, you have only, uh, um, 32 bits or 16 bit in this case for each variable x and y. Uh, the, the, the optimized function is basically coming from the problem statement, right? However, what is worth to call is this if statement, which is part of, not part of Python, but part of the uh, Z3 solver, okay? Here is an if statement which says like this, if the value of y is less than zero, 
uh, increment the value of y by y plus 7, right? y plus 7 will be transferred to y. Otherwise, don't touch it. Keep the value of y as it is. That's why y equal to y. Although it's kind of meaningless, but essentially you're assigning the value of y plus 7 to y if y is less than 0. So this portion of the code is, is straightforward translation from the C code to Python. Uh, and using the SMT solver syntax, I am using the if statement. Okay. All right. So what are we asking the prover to prove for us? We are climbing the theorem that all possible x and y, um, these two programs are, are the same, or these two algorithms are the same. So we are asking, uh, can you satisfy this theorem? And uh, uh, if, you, if you are able to satisfy this theorem, give us the value of m and n. That's what we are going to ask. Okay, so what we are going to do is this. Um, we, uh, we are using the SMT solver. Uh, uh, we ask the solver, did you find a solution? The satisfiable solution. If yes, print the model for us. And we wanted to find other values of m and n, right? So we are going to do, uh, ignore the current values of m and n. That's basically what we are doing here. Uh, we ask the model for all the parameters, x, y, m, and n, and we tell the model to exclude those uh, already visited values. So, so we don't want to see the m and n duplicated. Okay. Uh, once the model is running out of solutions, then it, the while loop will break. Okay, that's all. So let's let's try and see whether we can get this thing going. Okay. So all we need to do is uh, call Python. Okay. So it found a value m to be 31 and n to be 8. Okay, does it make sense? We can we can manually you know, verify m is equal to 31, n equal to 8. You know, um, m is 31, right? That's what we, we, we found out from the solver. m is equal to 31. Oh, <laughs> that's become horrible writing. Uh, m equal to uh, 31 and uh, n equal to 8. So we learned m is 31, n is equal to 8. Okay, how do we now check this is correct? Um, we can actually uh, do some some simple operations here. Um, what is the meaning of uh, x uh, left shift by five? Well, it means multiplying by two power five, which is thirty-two, right? So x is thirty-two uh, uh, x at this point, and then we are subtracting it by another x here, which means x is thirty-one x. So 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 m must be thirty-one. So that's why we put it here. X times m here. Okay, that's good. So we got m equal to thirty-one. What about uh, n equal to eight? How do we infer that? If our y is negative, it's going to use y plus 7. Uh, otherwise, it's going to take y, OK? So let's consider positive case. That means uh, this if statement has no effect for us. And what is the meaning of y right shift by 3? It means we are dividing it by, by 8, right? 2 power 3 is 8. So that's the reason n is 8, OK? So we found out that uh, this code uh, is equal for all possible values of x and y only if m is 31 and the n is equal to 8. 8. Otherwise, these two code uh, may not be equal. Okay, that's basically what uh, the, the solver has solved for us. And uh, we learned how to solve this problem. Um, very simple, interesting problem, I thought. Um, using, um, oops, so let me get back to the C code. The C code is essentially translated into, uh, into SMT solver as it is. Straight line code is easy, right? One by one, you can translate. Um, what we learned today is how to translate an if statement. Um, by the way, an if statement can also be modeled in SMT solver by if is a constraint as a function and uh, we specified the constraints uh, and it was able to solve this problem for us. So um, very nice. We can automatically solve whether two programs are equal. Uh, there are some, some theoretical bounds, of course, but um, in, 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 uh, in general, if you have very fine grained verification tasks like these kinds of low level programming, you can simply model it in SMT solver and compare whether your algorithm is, is, uh, is equal to the specification. Okay, our program is equal to specification. Okay, if you want to treat this as a as a specification and this is an implementation, uh, you can use the, the SMT solver trick to, to to verify correctness for all possible x and y's or whatever input you have. Okay, thank you very much. That's all.